So here's a strong acid, strong base. So we're starting out at acidic conditions. And then we're adding base to it. So the pH is going to go up, but it's going to pretty much have that same curve that we just showed. If we're titrating a base instead of an acid, though, that means our base is in our sample in the flask, and we've put the acid in the burette, and that's perfectly fine. Okay? If we're going after a weak base, that's what we're going to have to do. Of course, it's kind of be, going to be opposite because our base is our sample, so we're going to start out at a high pH. And then as we add this strong acid, we're neutralizing the base pH is going to go down. Then it still has that sharp curve, and then goes off until basically the limit of the pH of the original acid solution. All right, one uh, point here, though, is that let's think about a strong acid, strong base. So what strong acid do we want to titrate? HCl. HCl? What strong base do we want to use? OH. OH. Any particular uh, flavor? And AOH? Okay, good. That is a terrible choice of words. I shouldn't have said flavor. Don't taste the sodium hydroxides or potassium hydroxides. They all taste like ouch. All right, so what are going to be our products with HCl and sodium hydroxide? Water and uh, sodium chloride. Water and sodium chloride. Perfect. All right, so one uh, really, um, uh, I don't know about really, but one uh, aspect of strong acid and strong bases titrations, so this is the same equation no matter which way we titrate it. If we titrate the acid or we titrate the base, this could be our equation. All right, so at the equivalence point, we've added just enough sodium hydroxide to neutralize all the HCl, or we've added enough HCl to neutralize all sodium hydroxide. So at the equivalence point, all we have is sodium chloride in water. What did we figure out about uh, chloride? Is it a weak base, a weak acid, or? It's neutral. Remember, it's neutral because it's the conjugate base of HCl, so it never is going to accept the proton to go back to HCl, right? So this is a neutral solution. And so at the equivalence point for either strong acid or strong base, the equivalence point is always going to occur at pH 7. Which gave us one problem with titrations. All right, so the equivalence point uh, for weak acid and weak bases, it's not going to be exactly 7, but it'll be around there. Um, and for strong acids and strong bases, it's definitely at pH 7. So if we calculated the hydronium concentration at pH 7, at near the equivalence point, it would be 10 to the negative 7, so pH, pH, uh, hydronium concentration 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. Is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th a uh, big number or a small number? Small, small number. So. Since the hydronium concentration is so small near the equivalence point, very small additions of hydroxide will have a big impact on the pH. That's why the pH shoots up or shoots down over in that case. Right, that's why the slope is so extreme there, because the hydronium concentration is low. And if you remember in Gen Chem 1, when you're using uh, phenothaline for the indicator, it just seemed like the smallest, tiniest drop made your solution go from like lightest pink to purple almost. Remember having that much fun, all that fun with that? Because, and again, that's because the hydronium concentration is so uh, low near the equivalence point that a small drop of hydroxide just blows you past the equivalence point. And so that's why it was tough to get a really nice light pink color, um, which I definitely saw in your first couple titrations. It's okay, it's okay, you got better. That third. Third sample is spot on. <laughs>